Hi, welcome to Aquasearch Aquarium. My name is Dr. Rick Braley. I'm a specialist in giant clam culture and clownfish breeding. Come on inside and have a look. I set up my aquarium in 1998 to show people my research and to have a place on the island where visitors can see the island marine life. The giant clam in the aquarium is 29 years old in 2015. I have grown them myself from seeds, starting from fertilized eggs. Aquaculture giant clams from this batch are now very large, weighing 100 plus kilos and measuring almost one meter in length. I also aquaculture clownfish here to sell to aquarium shops and to people with home aquariums. Promoting aquaculture of clownfish and other marine ornamental fish reduces overfishing from the reef. I keep a number of breeding pairs, some which may regularly lay their eggs. I raise their hatched young, or larvae, in my special breeding tanks, feeding the larvae with various live foods that I also aquaculture. Dr. Rick Braley is one of the world's experts in giant clams and has dedicated his life to researching and understanding this special animal. Giant clams live in the warm waters of the tropical Pacific and Indian Ocean. There are about 10 different species and the largest type can grow to 1.3 meters long and weigh more than several hundred kilograms, living 80 to 100 years in the ocean if they are lucky. The true giant clam is the largest bivalve mollusk that has ever been found in the fossil record on Earth. We are lucky to have it alive in our time. But excuse me, Dr. Rick, what is a bivalve mollusk? Well, bivalve mollusks are shellfish with two shells, so they can open and close to protect the soft tissue within their shells. They can be small like these cockles, or almost as big as a person like these giant clams. The giant clam is the largest bivalve mollusk ever, and you can see this type of giant clam in the aquarium. Giant clams are still eaten and considered a delicacy in some cultures. When Captain Cook first saw one, he noted that there is a cockle so large that two men cannot eat one at a sitting. Because of this, giant clams are now considered a vulnerable species so that people don't have to keep taking these endangered animals from the wild. Dr. Rick has long been working on the best way to breed and grow giant clams. The giant clams in the aquarium are from this research done in the mid 1980s. It used to be thought that giant clams could trap swimmers or divers and even eat humans. Wow, Dr. Rick, is that true? Can giant clams trap humans? Well, there has never been a proven case of a giant clam causing the death of a human. There is one story of a Muslim free diver in 1934 in Palau in southern Philippines who was trapped by a giant clam when he was trying to get a large white pearl from inside. Although the giant clam will close to protect itself, this story is probably untrue. The muscle the giant clam uses to close his shell simply moves too slowly to trap someone by surprise. Wow, that's a great story about giant clams and pearls. So they don't eat people? No, giant clams only eat microscopic plankton and are solar animals. But Dr. Rick, what is a solar animal? Do you mean they are solar powered? Solar animals are animals that get their energy from the sun. Just like plants, the clams use the sun's energy to grow. Inside their soft tissue, if you look very closely, you will see tiny dots. These are a type of algae living with the clam and using the clam as protection. In exchange, the clam consumes the sugars and proteins produced by the billions of algae that live in their soft tissue. Giant clams are also social animals, often living in groups or clumps. Here on Monetic Island, you can see examples of giant clams clumping in their natural environment. Dr. Rick Braley has set up two snorkel trails for you to enjoy, one in Nelly Bay and one in Jeffrey Bay. 
The other main activity here on Manetic Island's Aquasearch Aquarium is breeding clownfish for home aquariums. Rather than taking clownfish from the wild, here at the aquarium we breed this colourful species for people who want them. The popularity of the animated movie Finding Nemo has made the clownfish a very popular addition to their home aquariums. Because of the aquaculture, the clownfish is almost known as the goldfish of a marine aquaria. Clownfish are also known as anemone fish because they live amongst sea anemones. Although sea anemones have venomous tentacles to catch food and protect them from various predators, the clownfish is immune to the venom because it has a thick layer of slimy mucus on the surface of the body. What's mucus? Sounds disgusting! Well, mucus is pretty disgusting. We all produce mucus, and us humans usually only notice it when we have a cold and a runny nose. A lot of marine animals use this mucus as a way to protect their skin, but the clownfish has a thicker layer to protect it from the anemone stinging cells. Clownfish use the anemones as protection for predators. However, in the wild, the clownfish are often preyed upon by eels and larger fish. Here in the aquarium, they live happily amongst the anemones and giant clams, often swimming in and out of the clams' water siphons. Look out! That clam might eat you up! Don't worry. Like we found out earlier, clams are solar animals, getting most of their energy from the sun and only eating microscopic plankton, so the clownfish are quite safe living amongst them. Here at AquaSearch, we breed clownfish for home aquariums. To do this, we use terracotta pots as nesting areas so the clownfish feel safe inside and lay their eggs on the curved surface of the pot. Female clownfish can lay a hundred or more eggs about twice a month. Both the male and female take care of them by fanning the eggs with their fins and removing fungus or dead eggs until they hatch. Incubation lasts between 6 to 10 days and ends with a huge number of young clownfish called larvae that hatch about 2 hours after sunset. After the babies emerge from the eggs, here at the aquarium we feed them on aquacultured microscopic rotifers for the first week. After this, they eat zooplankton such as brine shrimp or sea monkeys. They can learn to eat finely grounded dry food after about a month. An interesting fact about clownfish is that all eggs hatch and develop as males. When the female in the group dies, a dominant male undergoes a change and turns into a female. Wow, that's really interesting, Dr. Rick. Thanks for sharing all those interesting facts about the underwater world. You're welcome. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I'm always happy to talk about my giant clams and their friends, the clownfish. <laughs>